order of service for Christian funerals, which we will follow this morning, is found beginning on page 144 in the red hymnals located in the pews. It also is outlined in the worship folder distributed by our ushers that you entered this morning. Our service will begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 379, also in that red hymnal, Amazing Grace. <laughs> Thanks. 
safe. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please join me in the response of reading the words of resurrection comfort on page 145 in the hymn book. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. The Apostle Paul writes to the Romans, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus gives us this comfort. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. He gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we also appear with him in glory. We will be before the throne of God. And serve him day and night. Never again will we hunger. Never again will we thirst. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be our shepherd. He will lead us to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Let us pray. God of all grace, you sent your Son Jesus to destroy the power of death and to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we too shall live. Comfort us with your promise that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from the love which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is found in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. In the book of Revelation, God granted John a vision of heaven where he saw the saints triumphant, the saints who had been washed in the blood of Christ, the saints whose sins had been forgiven and now live with him eternally. We read from, John, or from Revelation chapter 7, beginning at verse 9, where John writes, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? Where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will spread His tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of our Lord. We continue now with our next hymn, In Christ Alone. That hymn is found in the blue hymn of South Africa. The book is hymn number 752 in that blue-covered book.
through me. Dear friends in Christ, as we travel on our journey through this life, there come to be people in our lives that serve to give us direction, help us find our way. For some of you, you may have called that person your wife, your mom, your <coughs> or just a dear friend. I didn't get to know Mitzi nearly as long as probably any of you today, but in the short time that I did get to know her, I learned very well that she loved her family, her friends, and her Savior. The sad fact of life in this world, though, is that we live in a world that has been deeply affected by sin. And because of sin, death came into this world. And because of sin, our loved ones, those people who help us find our way and give us direction, sometimes are taken from us. When that happens, when death takes one of our loved ones, it can leave us feeling lost. When we find ourselves without those wonderful people that God blessed our lives with, we feel all kinds of emotions. All kinds of emotions that you might not ever feel at any other time than now. When a loved one passes away, you might feel sad. You might feel angry or confused or lost or any number or combination of those emotions and a hundred others all at the same time. The reason we're here today, the very purpose of a Christian funeral, though, isn't to reminisce on what a wonderful person Mitzi was, even though I'm sure we could fill more hours than we could count with stories about her love and kindness. The reason that we're here today is to help each other, to help those of us who are left here in this world find our way. And we do that by turning to the thing that gives each of us direction in life, to God's Word, the instructions He left us to show us the way. The good news is that even though your, your dear loved one is no longer here with us, there is absolutely no question about where she is. There's no doubt that your dear friend, grandma, your wife, your mom, that she's at her Savior's side in heaven. There's no doubt in my mind that she is there with the Lord of life who conquered death. A couple days ago, she saw Jesus with her own eyes. She got to meet the one whom she had relied upon to give her direction, to show her the way. In the portion of John's Gospel that I read just a minute ago, Jesus was preparing his disciples, his closest friends, his family essentially, for life after he was no longer with them. He knew that the time was coming for him to go to Jerusalem to die on the cross for the sins of the world. He knew that after that he would conquer the grave, victoriously rising from it three days later. And after that his mission on earth would be done. He would ascend back to heaven to be with his Father. He knew that he only had a short time left with his disciples on earth. And that after he was gone they were going to feel lost, confused. Sad. They had looked to him for direction for so long, he would now point them in a new direction. Not to him personally, physically there with them, but to heaven. There would no longer be a reason for him to stay behind on earth. His job was done. And it was time for the disciples to take on that job of the ministry of the gospel, of sharing the good news of salvation. Christ's life, death, and resurrection of the world. But in order to do that, Jesus knew they would need some direction. Jesus knew that his disciples were sinful humans, just like we are. That they would feel the same things similarly to those who lost a loved one. So he speaks to them as a friend, just like he speaks to us. And he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. And then Jesus reminds them that in his Father's house there's many rooms, a place for everyone. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus tells them the reason that he's leaving is to prepare a place for them. 
He says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I certainly will come back to bring you to be with me, to be where I am. So though Jesus would not be right there physically present with his disciples any longer, he promised that he wouldn't be far off. That they would know where he was and that one day they would join him again. He tells us exactly where he's going to be and exactly what he's going to be doing. He said that he would return to heaven to prepare a place for others to join him. And then it logically follows that if Jesus was going to go and prepare a place for us, he was going to bring us to be with him. So we don't have to feel lost. We don't have to wonder where we're going to find direction. Jesus gives us direction. He points us to himself. And after he had explained where he was going, why he was going there, he spoke those beautiful, comforting sentences. However, it's a sentence that the disciples might not have fully understood at the time. It's a sentence we don't always fully understand either. Jesus said to them, you know the way to where I am going. And one of his disciples, Thomas, speaks up and essentially says, Lord, what are you talking about? We don't know where you're going. How can we get there? So then Jesus spells it out for them, just like he spells it out for us sometimes. He says directly to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said that his disciples knew the way to heaven because they did. They knew that he was the only path. And in the midst of the emotions they were feeling, they didn't realize it, but they knew it. They knew it well. They knew that Jesus was the only path to heaven and that trusting in him as their Lord and Savior, one who took away all of their sins and made them fit for God's company in heaven, that was the way. Lindsay knew it too. She knew it well. That was very clear. No matter what happened, she knew her Savior would show the way. No matter what ups and downs, what troubles this life brought, she knew that Heaven was certain for her. Like I said before, I'm sure we could tell stories upon stories about her love, her selfless kindness. But the only reason to mention any of that would be as evidence that she knew the way. She knew the love of her Savior. And she showed it. She knew the love of Jesus who died on the cross to take away her sins, and she reflected that love in her life to her family, to her friends. She knew the way. Mitzi knew the love of her Savior, the love that, that conquers death. So we know with utmost certainty where she is right now. We also know with utmost certainty how we can get to where she is. We know the way, too. And I know you do, because you just heard Jesus tell you the way. That he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Trusting in Jesus as your one and only Savior from sin is the way by which we will join him. It gives us direction, too. It leads us to our Lord, and to our loved ones who have gone before us in faith, to that blessed and joyful reunion we get to look forward to in heaven because Jesus conquered death and shows us the way to himself. If you feel a little like the disciples did in John chapter 14, you're not quite sure about what the way is or how to get to where Jesus is, come talk to me sometime. I would love nothing more than to talk to you about the way to Jesus. I want to be able to talk with the same certainty about all of your places in heaven the way I can talk with certainty about Mitzi's place in heaven. So if you're uncertain at all, find time today, at lunch, whenever, give me a call. Let's talk about where Jesus is and how to get to him. Your dear loved one certainly knew the way. I can assure you of that. She knew the way to heaven through her Savior, Jesus. In the days ahead, it might feel like your wife, your mom, your grandma, your friend, 
is gone. But she most certainly isn't. You know right where she is. You can't go touch her hand or speak to her eye to eye any longer for a while. But the day will come when you can. Because you know the way. You know the way to heaven. You know the way to where she is. Through Jesus, your Lord and Savior. You know the way. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. And trust also in your Savior. In His name, Amen. We join now to confess our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find them printed on page 146 in the Father Hymnal and the Order of Service for Christian Funerals. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We'll continue now with the next hymn, number 440, on Eagle's Wings.
God, we praise you for the great company of saints who have finished their lives in faith and now rest from their labors. We remember especially our loved one, Mary Buckingham, whom you have redeemed by the blood of your Son and received as your dear child through holy baptism. We thank you for giving her to us as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your compassion, comfort all who are sad in this hour. Lord, in your mercy, we praise you for the love of Christ which sustains us in life and death. In our earthly sorrows, help us find strength in the fellowship of the church, joy in the forgiveness of sins, and hope in the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, you do not leave us as comfortless, but strengthen and care for us through your word and sacrament. You give us family, friends, and neighbors to help when there is loneliness now and in the days to come. Brighten our future with a firm trust in your promises and care. Lord, in your mercy, remove our fears and make us bold to pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll conclude now with our closing hymn, hymn number 152, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.